The International Astronomical Union has honored the Maya culture by naming the origin of coordinates in Mercury, Juncal, which is a Maya numeral for number 20. Um, I will talk about the culture, the calendar, equinoxes, the Senate path, and Venus. Um, the green uh, part of this map indicates the place where the Mayas flourished. It's an enormous um, territory, larger than, in surface larger than France, and throughout this region there were common things in the culture, so it was a very strong um, culture. The Mayas were a slave society and they had to organize their year according to rainy seasons and dry seasons. So the importance of cal a calendar was fundamental in order to organize their civil life, build monuments, and do agriculture. Every single site of the Mayas had timekeeping purposes. Um, for instance, a very well-known example is Chichen Itza, where the pyramids had a special lighting that looked like a serpent descending the staircase during the equinoxes. Um, how did they achieve this? Well, they built models, small models of their sites, and that way they could calculate how to align their pyramids, how to face important dates for them, like the Senate Pass, the, 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 the way the moon moves, the way the sun moves, and Venus, of course. It's well known that they could predict eclipses. And of course, they knew the way the ecliptic changed during the year, it changes differently than in France because it goes beyond the Senate path. And they knew the moon's trajectory. They knew it crossed and formed a five degree um, difference. So they could predict precisely by observing the path of the moon when there would be an eclipse, even if they couldn't see it at their different cities. One must keep in mind that this culture had no metals. So all these wonderful things like jewelry and masks were carved by using stones, just stone against stone. Um, and fortunately, the Mayas also could write. And the scriptures give us um, lots of information about their culture. If you could help me, please. Go, just go, go, advance, advance, more, 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 just go for it. More, 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 quickly, quickly. Okay, here we are. As you can see, the writing um, was very important. If you write a, a long book, it's easier to put lots of information in it. These are the different, um, the different days of the year where there were celebrations. And as you can see, there were lots of them. Um, they didn't have paper, but they did have bark for their, for their drawings. And they also used um, other, other fibers to do their, to, to, to write their books. Unfortunately, most of the, the books were burned during the conquest, but fortunately, the stones remained. And now the Maya language can be translated, and we know the center part of each of the glyphs is a word like house or rain or whatever, and the part of the glyphs that surrounds the main word indicates if it's movement, if it's a verb, an adjective, etc. So this way we can know what they meant with their different constructions. The Mayas had two different 
calendars that ran at the same time. One was the, the, the astronomical calendar, similar to the ones that were developed by other cultures, and the other one was 260 days long. Every 52 solar years, the calendar began again, and they had these great ceremonies. They turned off all the fires and then relighted er fires in every household. So it was a great ce celebration of renewal. Um, the reason for the 260 calendar is that it's the time that a woman takes to conceive her child. Um, the, there was a unique calendar across Mesoamerica, across this enormous place where I showed you on the map. And there were several um, places where astronomers met. This is in the Maya region, but in northern Mexico City or middle Mexico City, there are similar sculptures where astronomers are pulling the sun in order to decide which would be the beginning of the year throughout this enormous region and be able to organize their commerce and other activities. Um, as was mentioned previously, they measured where the sun um, um, rose and set with the landscape. Since the Maya land is so flat, they didn't have any mountains or they, the, they faced the ocean, so they built specific monuments for different dates. This, for instance, is a picture of what happened at Mayapan. The astronomers also had measuring devices. Their devices weren't as complex as the astrolabs that have a weight and a viewer. They used merely two sticks. One had to be horizontal, and the other was placed at the altitude of the celestial object. And this way, they could draw the different paths of the sun, the moon, and Venus, and Mars, of course, and know when special events would happen, such as the eclipses, or the, the, the spring solstice, and they built monuments specially to view this, this date. They also had zenith path monuments, which um, were different days throughout Mesoamerica, and this is why the different people had to agree on the, on the date of the beginning of the year that was when rain began, but it was different at different latitudes because they wanted the, 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 the year to begin during the Senate Pass. Um, one, of the, one of the constructions that prevails from Central America to Northern Mexico is a ball game, game court. And this served many purposes, religious, social, political, and of course, timekeeping purposes. During the equinoxes, the sun set or rose precisely in the whole of the ball game um, circles, which is clearly an example of how refined their astronomy was and the care with which they built their different monuments. There was, of course, a, a lunar goddess, Ixhel is her portrait, her name, and they also built observatories. This one is called the snail because it has an inner pathway that has the shape of a snail, and it had different windows to view the equinoxes, the rising and setting of the sun, the moon, and Venus. Um, they also knew about the Milky Way, and there's one special site, Bonampak, that has a building that has beautiful frescoes, and we know the day it was dedicated, and the day of its dedication the Milky Way was oriented exactly with these monuments, with the frescoes. They thought the Milky Way, well, one of their interpretations was a snake, and what they wanted was to unite the heavens with the earth, and that's why 
they did these things like um, unite the day of the dedication of these monuments with the path of the Milky Way. Um, Venus was part of a very important of their, of their culture. They knew that every so, five, eight solar years, Venus's period was going to be in such a way that, that they had the same position with respect to the stars and the Earth. And they also had special celebrations for these days. It was actually so important that in many parts of Mexico, this is near Mexico City that's far away from the, from the Maya regions, they had depicted Venus. The skirt of, of this um, figure is the representation of Venus. You can see the stars. You can see the scorpion that rises um, more or less at the beginning of the, of the Maya year. And beneath the Venus symbol, maybe you can see the skirt of this figure. The dots were a representation of the, of the sky because the jaguar was the representation of the sky because it had all these dots on it. Um, there were several uh, um, monuments dedicated to Venus. For instance, the Venus platform at Chichen Itza. The figure on the left is an eagle which represented the sun because it travels through the sky. And the figure at right, um, the Venus figure is slightly slanted. Maybe you can recognize it. And at Mayapan, there is something extraordinary that is registered. And the register shows something that might be the transit of Venus. In a few months, the sun will rise with Venus crossing its face. And since Venus is always, always near the horizon, it's possible that they could have seen this with their naked eyes. Of course, they could calculate when this would happen because they knew their tra the trajectories of Venus and of the sun very precisely. But this mural at Mayapan indicates that they saw such an event and the archaeoastronomers are going to try to duplicate this in the coming year. I believe this year can serve many purposes. And one of them is to give us freedom, the freedom we need to learn, to have our own culture, and to do science. Thank you very much.